Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A path of destruction and devastation left behind by a series of deadly tornadoes. The storms killing five people across the state, damaging dozens of communities and now residents rallying together, already trying to set up and rebuild. Tonight, the threat may be behind us, but weeks of cleanup and recovery efforts certainly lie ahead. Yeah, hundreds of thousands are still being impacted by the wreckage these deadly storms created. Some families changed forever. Uh, we've got three live teams out covering the aftermath, including meteorologist Kim Adams, who's been following these storms since they first popped onto exact track 4D radar, of course, last night. Yeah, these tornadoes pushing into the outskirts of Metro Detroit about 926 last night. The alerts from clickondetroit.com sent directly to your phones, letting you know when life-threatening weather was in your neighborhood. And when it was all said and done, at least five tornadoes touched down in Michigan. Uh, those confirmed tornadoes hit near Belleville, Canton, Fowlerville, Grand Rapids, and between Williamston and Weberville. And even now at this hour, in fact, the National Weather Service still has teams in Metro Detroit investigating the debris, the data, the evidence that might be there for tornadoes. Our team coverage begins in Weberville, one of the hardest hit areas near I-96 where one person died. Demond Fernandez is live with an up-close look at the damage there, Demond. You know, Kimberly, neighbors we're talking to in this area are telling me you can't even begin to imagine the magnitude of frustration they're dealing with right now, all because of that tornado that ripped through this area. Just take a look around here. This is debris that ripped off from a barn right here. This is typical of the damage we're seeing all around Ingham County right now. It's all hands on deck around properties across Ingham County. I've been here since 1944. Never had a tornado before. As neighbors clean up, the huge mess that was caused by a tornado that hit this area overnight. Here in Weberville, siding from rooftops is wrapped around trees. Strong winds flattened a cornfield, and it sent this trailer tumbling and tossing across the road like a toy. Over in Williamston. Wow, it's devastating. Crews were busy Friday morning doing roof repairs after a tree damaged a senior living center. Nearby in Leroy Township, Paul Stanton rushed to help clear debris around his mother's home. There's a lot of trees down that we're trying to get cleaned up so that she can kind of get back to normal life. The severe storm caused widespread power outages, forcing several businesses, including gas stations, to close. A stretch of I-96 was shut down due to downed trees and several overturned vehicles. Ingham County Emergency Management said one person was killed here. <laughs> down the road in Fowlerville, Munsell Farms is among neighbors dealing with damage too. Well, we lost part of that roof on the, the old cow barn and the hay barn. We lost two thirds of that, went through part of the greenhouse. Frank Munsell almost choked up in tears while discussing how hard his property was hit. How are you guys going to deal with this? <clears throat> Get up every morning. This is tough. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a good thing, but we'll make her. And we'll make it. That's the sentiment we're hearing all across this area right now. Here's another look at some of that debris from the barn. I tell you, those strong winds blew some of that debris right across the street into a cornfield, nearly flattened that cornfield. Neighbors are telling me it's going to take days to clean this up. But again, we'll make it. In Weberville, we'll I'm Demond Fernandez, Local 4. Okay, Demond, we appreciate your report. Devin. This afternoon, Governor Whitmer declared a state of emergency for Wayne and Monroe counties. Frenchtown Township, one of the places that's going to need help bouncing back from not only flooding, but heavy rain, all of the st what the storms that the storms brought in. Let's get to Priya Mann, who is live tonight in Gibraltar with the story there. Priya. And Devin, Kim, the sound of generators and chainsaws has been constant throughout the day. And here's why homeowners are dealing with downed trees in their front yards, in their backyards. Let me show you this neighborhood here in Gibraltar. Piles of branches in front of every home. About 12 miles from where we are here in Gibraltar is Frenchtown Township. And you're talking about a whole different level of damage when it's a mobile home community. And neighbors there were stunned by what they saw. I mean... Whole roofs are missing off of trailers, all the skirting's missing, the sheds are blown down, stuff's all over everywhere. Steve Doctor has lived in Frenchtown Township for years and says he's never seen anything like this. The police are blocking off the entrances. Nobody can get in and out unless you live here. Everybody's running chainsaws all over the place and it's, it's 
crazy. I've never seen an aluminum flagpole snap. Drone 4 shows the damage in the Frenchtown Villa mobile home community. One home was flipped over with the roof ripped to shreds. Giant trees brought down by gusting winds and torrential rain. Kind of felt like my home was going to shift off the blocks. What's going through your mind? Oh, I was just trying to hopefully it passes through, keep them safe. They stayed sleeping, huh? Over in Gibraltar, this cemetery sustained significant damage as family members checked on their loved one's final resting place. Homeowners in a nearby community have a long cleanup ahead. This family hid in a pantry Thursday night until it was safe to come out and assess the damage. Just waiting to see if we're at the pass. Give it a few minutes, no noise. All right, let's go see what's going on. I had to go buy a new chainsaw. Mine's up north of the cabin and uh, cut all this up and get it ready and then deal with insurance. And the cleanup begins today. Dealing with insurance could take even longer. A lot of homeowners still assessing the damage. That man had to buy a chainsaw. Folks are out there buying generators. You can hear generators running right now. A massive cleanup here in Gibraltar and Frenchtown Township as folks clean up after last night's storm. Reporting live in Gibraltar, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Tough, all right, Priya. Well, take a look at this video. We just got in from Ferndale. An uprooted tree fell across Saratoga Street. That's just east of Woodward, crushing a car and badly damaging the house across the street. Thankfully, doesn't sound like anybody was injured in all of that, but some severe repair work will be needed. Yes, on, on that house indeed. Uh, let's move to this. Uh, take a close look at this. this is from my picks. This is Walled Lake. You'll notice a boat propeller uh, sticking up out of the water. That's because last night's storms flipped a pontoon boat and it's hoist upside down. And we are getting hundreds of my picks like this. And to send us yours and to see what other people are posting, head to click on Detroit.com slash my picks, M I P I C S, and select weather from the drop down menu. All right, let's get speaking of weather. Let's get back to Kim Adams live in South Rockwood. Another location hit really hard. Yeah, this storm moved through quickly, really packed a punch though, Kim. It did, and just a few minutes ago, I got word from the National Weather Service. They've now confirmed another tornado, this one right here in South Rockwood. It formed very close to the other tornado, which was about two miles from here, all at the same time, within minutes of each other. Last night, if you were watching, you heard me say probably over and over again, if you're on the second floor, if your bedrooms are on the second floor, get to the lowest level of your house. Even if the kids are sleeping, wake the kids up. This is the reason why. This home in South Rockwood, at 1038 had a tornado form right outside the house. The homeowner started hearing walnuts from their giant walnut tree hitting the windows. Fortunately, he was on the first floor. Had he been here on the second floor, I mean, just picking up some of the drywall, some of the insulation, uh, it could have been a lot worse. So when we say get to the lowest level of your house, this home is a great example of why we say that over and over again. The safest place to be in a tornado is on the lowest floor of your house and certainly one of the most dangerous places on the second floor as it was in this house. But as I said, the homeowner's okay. He was not on the second floor. He heeded the warnings, went down on the first floor. So he is safe. His home, however, not in such great shape. So I wanna recap the fifth tornado that hit Metro Detroit and then the other tornado in Grand Rapids. So we had a very busy time last night. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one that hit Newport. This one formed in Ash Township uh, on a farm and it moved quickly to the southeast over a mobile home park. So as we look at the velocity, you can see uh, that uh, the red butted against the green again indicating there was rotation. This was at 1038. And oftentimes what happens and what can happen is that a secondary tornado will form. And it appears as though that's exactly what happened because that Newport tornado hit right around I-275 and 75, just north of Newport, went over to the French Town Villa Mobile Home Park. But a second tornado did now hit where we are right now. We've been out here since four o'clock this afternoon. And I can see why that the National Weather Service has now confirmed that South Rockwood now just confirmed our fifth tornado within really an hour's time last night. But the homeowner is safe. Uh, you know, I was talking to the homeowner, uh, Devin and Kimberly, and you know, he's just kind of in a daze because if you have a tree down in your front yard or if you have some debris around your house, you get out, you start cleaning it up. 
what, what do you do with this? I mean, you just yeah. you wait for the insurance adjuster to come, mm -hmm. and it's going to take a long time, and he has to figure out, where am I going to sleep tonight? What am I going to do? <sighs> um, and so he's still in a little bit of, a little bit of shock. Yeah, there's so much to this first day, mm -hmm. the shock of what's happened to you, yeah. and then yeah. it, the, uh, the scale of what you have exactly. to do just looks enormous at this point. Yeah. So. Overwhelming. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, Kim, we'll get back to you here in just a few moments. Last night's storm certainly did a number, of course, on the power grid. Yeah, take a look at the latest outage map here. Right now, 209,000 DTE customers are without electricity. Hank Winchester tracking the effort to get that power restored. Hank. Yeah, Kimberly, Devin, good evening to both of you. This is the problem, as you can see right here behind me. Down lines are all over Metro Detroit. Tonight, we were inside DTE headquarters getting you the answers that you need. We've seen two large weather events across DTE service territory, first starting on Wednesday night, affecting roughly 50,000 customers. Uh, we were able to restore over 85% of those customers, and we're continuing to restore those customers as days go on. Um, and then, as you know, just under 24 hours later, we saw a supercell of thunderstorms. Do you ever wonder how DTE manages and keeps track of everything that's going on? Well, right now you're in the Storm Operations Center and take a look at this huge grid here behind me. That map is not only tracking the crews on the ground, but also what areas are affected by power outages right now. Right now, DTE crews are out there, fanned out all over Metro Detroit, working to get more than 200,000 people powered up. Here's the plan. We have our DT contract crews, we have our DT employees. We brought in uh, what we call foreign crews from outside of the state to support over 2,500 employees working to restore our customers. And if you're frustrated, we get it. You're not alone. What do you say to the customer who says, not again? Okay, DTE, what's going on? Why is this happening? I mean, is it chalked up to unusual weather event? First off, on behalf of DT, I'd like to apologize and understand how hard it can be to be without electricity. Um, we have seen multiple extreme weather events across DT, not only this week, um, but multiple events this year. The Storm Operations Center manned 24-7. Crews are working to identify problems, and they're working to get into your neighborhood. Back out here live in Southfield, we know those men and women working all over Metro Detroit in your neighborhoods. They're doing what they can to get that power restored. DTE also needs some help from you, though. If you feel like you haven't seen a crew in your area and your power is still out, make sure you either use that mobile app to identify the problem, let them know what's going on, or call DTE directly. Give them an update. We're live here tonight in Southfield. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Local 4. Okay, Hank, thank you. Wayne County issuing a health advisory asking people to stay away from the River Rouge, the Huron River, and the Detroit River. And here's why. The flooding caused local public works departments to discharge some wastewater, which is, was untreated or partially treated into those waterways. So the bottom line here, avoid all contact, keep your pets away, avoid eating any fish caught in these rivers for the time being. If you do come in contact with water from any of those rivers, avoid touching your face, wash the exposed areas immediately with soap and water. Meanwhile, in Detroit, Mayor Duggan and city officials announcing a new plan to clean up uh, storm-related tree damage. An additional 30 pickup crews being brought in to help. I expect all of these dead trees and branches removed from this city in the next three weeks. Uh, we're not going to let this linger uh, across the city. It's going to be a massive effort, uh, but we're going to be out there uh, every day. And there's a phone number. Detroiters can call 313-244-4444. 313-244-4444 from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily to report storm damaged trees. Residents asked to help uh, each other haul tree debris to the curbs right away. That will help move the process along.